Hello everyone and welcome back to another tutorial. In this tutorial we will be continuing on from last time by looking at an example simulation of the deformation of a copper silver alloy where we will use a set of parameters and compute centosymmetry, furthering our understanding of the lamp's input script and how to set up more complicated simulations utilizing parameter files. First, I went to the NIST Interatomic Potentials website. This is a great repository which contains verified parameters for a wide range of substances, including most elements and quite a lot of alloys for use with a variety of different force fields. I chose this particular set of parameters for a copper silver alloy, following the embedded atom method for interatomic potentials. If we look at, for example, another set of parameters above it, we can see that these ones specifically were derived computationally using density functional theory. There is no particular reason for why I chose one set over the other, but there we are. Looking at the page, we see that we will have to set our lamp's pair style to EAM slash alloy. So, having downloaded the parameters, copy pasted them into a text document, let's write our input script. I started off with the standard. Units, metal, three dimensions, periodic boundary conditions, atom style, atomic. The alloy has a face-centered cubic crystallographic structure. And if we open our parameter file that we just got, we can look at this line specifically to see what our lattice parameter is. In this case, it would be 3.615. As you can see, I then set up an FCC lattice with two atom types. As stated, our pair star will be EAM slash alloy, and our pair coefficients are stated in this particular file. We will use the compute command to compute our centosymmetry and atomic potential energies. We set our time step period and give our atoms initial velocities, and then perform equilibration using an NPT ensemble for 1000 steps. Finally, we again use the fix command to set up an NPT ensemble, and then we set up a few variables and use them with the fix command using the deform argument to deform our simulation cell over time. So that we can use our computer center symmetry, we dump our output in a CFG file, these particular arguments as opposed to our previously used LAMP's trajectory file format. Finally, we run our simulation for some time. I have chosen 20,000 steps. We go to command prompt, navigate to our working directory, and use the classical LAMP's input command. Now that we have run the simulation, we can open our output using a veto. We enlarge the edge on view, and then we add a color coding by going to add modification, color coding, and then we select center symmetry. We press adjust range to allow a veto to algorithmically deduce the best color scheme or range. A veto has many other useful features that you can play around with, including the splice tool to only show a part of your simulation cell show periodic images to periodically display your simulation cell, a whole collection of calculation and analysis tools, including a centosymmetry calculator that we could have used instead of our compute command, among other things. At the bottom, you should be able to see our animation manager. If not, we can select input and file contains time series. We can look at our simulation now. It's interesting to note that for this alloy specifically, deformation happens on a vertical plane, whereas in my earlier aluminium deformation video, deformation happens on a diagonal plane. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. See you next time.